Hello, hello, I'm Rex Astoria, and this is going to be the incredible tale of Albert Goering, the brother of Hermann Goering. So to start with Albert Goering, you're going to need to know his brother, Hermann Goering. Hermann Goering was the second in command of the entire Nazi empire. He was directly under Hitler. He was the commander in chief of the Luftwaffe, which was Germany's air force. He f basically founded the entire Gestapo, um, which was Germany's secret police. All in all, incredibly evil dude, convicted war criminal, everything horrible guy. Specifically, he had a massive role in the Holocaust. He killed a lot of people. Albert Goering, who was Hermann Goering's brother, is known for his incredible hatred of Nazis and how he did everything in his power to save as many Jews from certain doom in the Holocaust. Albert Goering hated Nazism. He hated Nazism, he hated their policies, and he did everything in his power to save dozens of Jews during the Holocaust. Albert was Hermann Goering's younger brother. Albert was born 9th of March, 1895. The Goering brother's father was Heinrich Goering, who was the Reichskommissar of German Southwest Africa, and he was also the German Consul General to Haiti. Heinrich was gone a lot because he was a diplomat, so their surrogate father was a man named Hermann Eppenstein. Not Epstein, Eppenstein. Very important distinction. Eppenstein was very rich. He owned two castles which the Goering brothers were raised in. The thing about Eppenstein that's particularly notable about the two brothers is Eppenstein was Jewish. He was a Jewish doctor. So Hermann Goering, one of the most anti-Semitic and evil people on the planet, was raised by a Jew. And now there are rumors that Eppenstein was actually the mother of Albert Goering. The only evidence for this is that Albert kind of looked like Hermann Eppenstein, but this is again, almost definitely false because Franziska Goering, who was Heinrich Goering's wife. Franziska Goering was actually in Haiti nine months before Albert was born, which makes it much more likely that Albert was not half Jewish. And now growing up, the Goerings were very close as brothers, but specifically, Albert was tall, slim, well-behaved, polite, modest, and he was also very popular with women. Herman, however, was fat, loud, anti-semitic he was a morphine addict he was very militaristic he was obese and he was a giant asshole did i mention that he was morbidly obese because he very much was he was always the antithesis of myself he was not politically or militarily interested i was he was quiet reclusive i like crowds and company he was melancholic and pessimistic and i am an optimist but he's not a bad fellow albert this is a statement from a post-war interrogation of Hermann Goering. When World War I triggered, Albert signed up with the 6th Bavarian Reserve Infantry Division and was a signalman. Albert served in the trenches and was injured very many times. Finally, in July of 1918, he was injured so bad that he was discharged from the army. Hermann, however, was a fighter ace, and he claimed many aerial victories and was a war hero and a national celebrity within Germany. Post-war, Albert went to Munich University, and there he met Maria von Uman, who he married and then quickly divorced. Directly after the war, Hermann was very butthurt that Germany lost, and he went looking around different beer halls in Munich, and there he found Hitler, and really liked what Hitler had to say. Eventually, of course, the Nazis did rise to power, and a large part of that was due to Hermann Goering. Albert hated the Nazis so much that two years after they took power, he moved to Vienna in 1935. And shortly after this was Albert's first high-level anti-Nazi activity. Now, of course, during the whole time between Hitler becoming like a known figure in German politics to when he moved, he hated Hitler and would openly shit talk him as no openly as he could. But this was like his first like real piece of resistance. And ironically, it actually came at the request of his brother, Herman. Now see, Herman's wife, Emmy, was an actress and she had a bunch of actress friends. And one of these friends was an actress named Henny Porton and her husband was Jewish. And this marriage was difficult to maintain because of the racial laws in Germany at the time. So Emmy wanted to help her friend out, um, but Herman obviously couldn't do anything because Herman had to agree with Hitler, and if he was ever found saving Jews, um, that would immediately mean execution for him, or at least public disgrace. So Herman asked his brother Albert to do something. And at this point, Albert was in Vienna and he worked at a film studio. So Albert got a contract signed for Henny Porton to come to Vienna and work for the film studio. 
and thus got her and her husband out Nazi Germany. I have a brother in Germany who's getting involved with that bastard Hitler, and he is going to come to a bad end if he continues that way. That's a quote from Albert Goering. We never spoke to each other because of Albert's attitude towards the party. Neither of us were angry at each other. It was a separation due to the situation. And that's a quote from Hermann Goering. The two brothers' disagreements led to them not talking a whole lot during this period. Then, in 1938, Hitler marched into Austria during the Anschluss. And in the few days preceding this, Albert worked tirelessly to get his Jewish friends as many visas as possible so that they could escape Austria and move somewhere else and escape the Nazis. Now, Albert was very opposed to Nazism, and uh, this shows. For instance, there was a story. There's one incident where Albert saw a group of Jews who were forced to scrub a street as a form of public humiliation. And obviously he did not like this, so he walked straight up to the, to the group of Jews who were meant to scrub the street, grabbed, uh, put his coat down, grabbed a brush from one of the ladies, and started scrubbing the street. Now, obviously, the SS thugs who were in charge of this public humiliation did not like this one bit, and they started to get rough with him. You know, they were like yelling at him and stuff, and he just showed them that he was Albert Goering, and they realized that maybe this was not someone that they should mess with, and the public humiliation stopped. And this story is very important in understanding Albert Goering, right? Because this is where he learns that he can use his name to evade trouble and event and save as many people as possible. There was a similar incident where he saw a crowd of people who were surrounding um, some old Jewish women. And around their necks, they had signs that said, I am a dirty Jewish pig. And he obviously did not like this. So he marched straight up to the woman, ripped the sign off of her neck and kind of led her away. And of course, when the Gestapo officers in charge of this public humiliation arrested him and threw him in jail, he just said, I'm Albert Goering, Hermann Goering's brother, really shouldn't mess with me. And he was released without any real consequences. And then there's another case of Albert saving a life when one of his friends, a Jewish doctor named Dr. Medvi, he wanted to escape Germany. So Albert helped him get a visa. And Albert sent a letter with Dr. Medvi that said, This is my good friend, Dr. Medvi. If anything should happen to him, the perpetrator will be responsible to my brother, the Reich Marshal, signed Albert Goering. I probably don't have to tell you that Dr. Medvi made it safely to London. Eventually, the film studio that Albert worked at, he was a technical director, they had to make pro-Nazi propaganda. Albert did not like this one bit, so he moved to Rome. In Rome, he became the director of Tobis Sasha Film Studios, and there he met a resistance leader named Dr. Ladislaw Kovacs, and he was so moved by talking to Dr. Kovacs that he donated all of his extra money to Dr. Kovacs and the resistance. Albert requested me to utilize it for the assistance of Jews and other refugees from Nazi tyranny. Dr. Ladislaw Kovacs. And then in June of 1940, Italy joined the Axis. And at this point, Albert could have escaped to London or some other place and made it out safe. He could have been safe and alive and he saved a few people, his conscience is clear. But of course, he decided to stay. And he decided to remain in Nazi-occupied Europe because there he could do the most good. And that is something incredible about Albert Goering that he could have escaped, he could have gotten himself to safety, but instead he decided to retreat back into the shadows of Nazism and from there prey on Nazism and save Jews. It's incredible. So Albert moved to Prague, which was occupied by Nazi Germany, and he became an export director at Skoda Works, which was a big arms manufacturer for Nazi Germany. The Skoda Works factories that were under Albert's control were the perfect place for a resistance to form. Albert turned a blind eye to a lot of the resistance activities that were going on in the factories at Skoda Works. For instance, like making dud shells, he didn't really care. Working very slowly, that was fine because it was resistance, that was good and uh, a variety of other things. Albert himself also delayed or sabotaged shipments of arms and war material. Another act of resistance that was common for Albert was not doing the Nazi salute. 
whenever a, an important high-ranking Nazi official would come into his office to ask for something, he, you know, they would do the Nazi salute and he would just stick his hand out for a handshake. He wouldn't do it. And it was a very small act of resistance, but one that could easily land you in a concentration camp. But he was Hermann Goering's brother, so that wasn't gonna happen. There was one time when five Skoda Works managers were imprisoned and put in a concentration camp on charges that they were spying for the allies. And Albert just wrote a few letters to his brother and all five of them were released. And then there's the case of Joseph Sharavat. Joseph Sharavat was a friend of Albert and a Jewish doctor. However, he was eventually captured by the Nazis and he was sent on a train to Dachau concentration camp. Obviously, Albert would not just let this stand. So he got a piece of paper that had the Goering family seal on it and wrote a letter to the commandant of Dachau concentration camp ordering that Joseph Sharavat be released immediately. And there were actually two people with the last name Sharavat in Dachau and the camp commandant was so afraid of pissing off Albert, brother of Herman, that he released both Sharavats. So he saved two people with one letter, which that must be like that other dude must feel so lucky that his life was saved because his last name was similar to someone who was last name was, he was friends with Albert and Now at this time, Albert is paranoid that he could have done more. He thinks that he could have saved more Jews if he just worked harder or something like that. And he does a very risky move to save a lot of Jews. So Albert drives to the Theresienstadt ghetto and he rolls up and he's like, I need a bunch of workers for my factory. And so he gets a few truckfuls of Jews who are going to be certainly executed. And he gets these few truckfuls and he drives into the middle of a forest and lets them all go. Now, obviously this gets him in a lot of trouble. And at this point, Hermann is kind of losing favor within the Nazi party because the Luftwaffe, the Air Force is not doing enough to protect Germany from uh, air raids by the Allies. So Hermann is getting less and less popular. So Hermann asks Himmler, who is chief of the SS, he's like, yo, my brother, can you please save him? And Himmler's like, okay, fine. But this was so bold um, and, and so crazy an undertaking by Albert that Hermann is like, okay, this is the last time that I can do something for you. So you just have to, you just have to stop. It's the last time I can save your neck. So then Albert just kind of has to lay low for the rest of the war. And then the rest of the war comes and goes and Albert is detained by the allies because he's Hermann Goering's brother. And they are like, okay, he has to have something to do with this. Specifically, he is detained by the Seventh Army Interrogation Center. And so the interrogators start interrogating Albert and he tells his story and nobody believes him. And it's crazy because he's he is the brother of the second in command of Nazi Germany. And he's trying to say that he has saved dozens of Jews. They were obviously a little suspicious and they thought he was making the entire thing up. But Albert writes a list of 34 names of Jews or people that he saved in the Holocaust. And the interrogators just throw it in the trash. They don't really look at it or consider it seriously. They just think it's some desperate plea to exonerate himself and avoid a lengthy war crime sentence. But then Albert gets saved by what seems like divine intervention. He's, a bunch of people are interrogating him um, and they never take his case seriously. But then he gets interrogated by someone named Victor Parker. And Victor Parker looks at this list and sees that number 20, Franz Lehar, is a Jew that Albert claims to have saved. And this is the crazy part. Franz Lehar was Victor Parker's uncle. The chances of that, I can't even describe how small they are, um, but Victor Parker is able to just call his uncle. And of course, Franz Lehar says, yes, and no, he did save me. A uh, very, very good guy, Albert. No, yeah, you should definitely exonerate him. And so then they start to take uh, his case more seriously and they start to actually review the names and Victor Parker, the interrogator is just like, yeah, no, we, this guy, he can go. He saved a lot of people. 
Um, so he is then extradited to Czechoslovakia, who was also suspicious of him and thought that he had committed war crimes. So he has a trial in Czechoslovakia, but he is saved because a bunch of his former colleagues at Skoda Works are like, nope, this guy, uh, really, this dude saved a lot of Jews. He was very active in the Czech resistance. He's a good guy. Don't sentence him for war crimes because he didn't commit any. But the real nail in the coffin for Albert's defense was there was an SS officer who uh, led Czech officials to a bunker that was filled with Gestapo documents. And in this bunker full of Gestapo documents was Albert's file. And so they, they saw how much the Gestapo hated Albert and they, of course, had a file of all the crimes he had committed. You know, they were like, oh, gosh, this guy has saved so many Jews. He hates Nazism. And so they were like, they loved that. Um, so he was exonerated. But see, unfortunately, this story does not have a happy ending. Because after the war, Albert lost everything, right? And he moves back to Vienna, totally penniless. And he's also unable to find a job because his last name is Goering. Now, obviously no one wants to hire a Goering, much less the brother of Hermann Goering. And no one knew about his anti-Nazi activities, so he was unable to find employment and eventually just became an alcoholic and depressed. And then his wife left him with, and took the children. They moved to Peru, and he was really only able to survive on the donations of the people that he had saved, but that wasn't enough. And he died a depressed alcoholic on December 20th, 1966. Now, of course, that's a very sad end to the life of Albert Goering, but Albert's life is a, is a perfect testament to the fact that people choose to be evil and choose to be good. Albert and Herman were cut from the same cloth, they had very similar genetics, and one chose to be the most ruthless person that they could be, and the other chose to be the best person that they could be. And that's a choice that everyone has. So it's a perfect example that you choose how you want to act. And it's also interesting to see how different brothers can be. This video is made in conjunction with another video. It's a similar type of story. The story of Heinz Heydrich, who was the brother of Reinhard Heydrich, who was an incredibly evil man in Nazi Germany, but his brother saved a lot of Jews. Um, and I think his story is incredible, and so that will be probably the next video. So stay tuned for the Heinz Heydrich video. Thank you all for watching. I've been Rex Astoria. Peace.